Have you ever thought of publishing a children's storybook but you just didn't know where to start? If so, this video is for you. Ever since I was young, I've always had this dream of publishing my very own children's storybook. However, it always felt like such a far-fetched dream for me. I always imagined that I'd need to somehow convince a big publishing company who'd be willing to publish my story for me or spend thousands of dollars up front to have my book independently printed without any guarantee that someone would actually buy it afterwards. While I've always enjoyed drawing as a kid, I was pretty sure that my own hand-drawn illustrations were not going to cut it for a children's storybook. I mean, look at this. Which means I'd probably need to pay a professional illustrator to do the book illustrations for me. That in itself could be very costly, especially when there's no guarantee that I'd actually make that money back from future book sales. But here's the good news I have for you. I was finally able to make this seemingly unattainable childhood dream of mine come true when I discovered Amazon KDP and Canva. With just these two tools and platforms alone, I was able to write my own story, create my own illustrations without hiring anyone to illustrate for me, and independently publish my story on Amazon KDP without having to spend a single dollar upfront. While I have to be honest that my children's storybook has yet to make me a whole lot of sales, it is still the most incredible feeling to be able to realize a dream like that. Today I will be showing you how to go about illustrating your own children's storybook on Canva without having to hire an illustrator. However, if you are brand new to KDP Publishing and have yet to publish your very first book, then I would highly recommend you start out by watching my step-by-step -step KDP Low Content Journal tutorial here first, as that video will cover all the basics you need to know about Canva and KDP Publishing. I would also recommend that you have at least a few low content books under your belt first before you try to tackle a children's storybook as that will make things a lot easier for you. And as usual, please make sure you stay until the end so you don't miss out on any of the tips and tricks I'm about to show you. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. Step 1. Decide on the dimensions of your children's storybook. You can pretty much pick any book size you want from the options available on Amazon KDP. For me personally, I created an 8.5 by 8.5 inch paperback book as I liked the idea of having a square shaped storybook. However, there is really no right or wrong answer to this. For inspiration, you can also take a look at other similar storybooks on Amazon to see whether there is a specific book size that makes the most sense for the type of storybook you are looking to publish. Step 2. Create the interior pages of your children's storybook. So in the interest of time, I have already opened up a new project on Canva and created the interior pages with the proper trim size along with the required margins. If you don't know how to set up your Canva page with the correct trim size and margins, please make sure you watch my step-by-step -step tutorial here for a low content journal publishing first, as it is very important that you get your pages set up correctly. Otherwise, you might risk having your text or illustrations cut off during printing. So now comes the fun part. I'm going to show you some examples of how you can create different storybook scenes using just the graphic elements available on Canva. Okay, so the first illustration tip I want to show you is how to take one graphic element or character, whether that be an animal or a human or a robot, basically any character, and turn it into different characters or the same character in different scenes doing different things. So for example, let's say I want to create a beach scene with two raccoons, one male, one female, hanging out at a beach. So let's try to create that scene. So let's take this raccoon here. Um, this raccoon doesn't have anything, so we're going to add another element to it. So let's say I want to add this straw hat on him to fit the beach theme. Then I'm going to add another raccoon who is going to be a female. I'm going to flip it around so they look like they're conversing with each other. Then I'm going to add a bow on this raccoon to make her look like a girl raccoon. And tilt this a little bit, move these guys out. And then what we can do is find a beach scene, send to back so it's all in the background. 
and then drag it out. There we go. And so let's say I want them to be holding something. Um, so let's say she wants to be eating popcorn and he wants to be having a drink of some sort. And then you can just sort of strategically place it in their hands, adjust the size. And there you go. It looks like two raccoons hanging out at a beach. You can add more graphic elements. It's really up to you how detailed you want each page to be. I can even add a little crab that's also hanging out with them at the beach if I wanted to. Um, and then here at the top is where I could add my story. So let's say Jasmine and Andy are hanging out at the beach, enjoying a nice breeze. Just as an example, just to show you how you can put the overlay the text of your story. Um, and you can change the font size as well as the font style to match the style of the storybook that you're writing. And there you go, that's one scene. So in my second illustration tip, I want to show you guys how I can create a completely different scene just by changing the background and changing a few of the other elements on the screen. So let's go ahead and create a new page. And let's say in this case, I want to create a scene where the raccoons are lining up to go into the circus. So let's now find a circus theme. Let's say we get this as the background. You can add a circus. And we want to make sure none of it comes out of the margins. And we can have this little elephant on the side. And now bring our raccoons into the picture. Oops. To make it look like they are getting ready to enter the circus. And of course, you can add a lot of things. You can also add cotton candy. And the other one can be holding a lollipop. And I could even put a hat on them, maybe a cap. Say so I put this one on one of them. And the other one. And there you go. Pretty much using the same raccoons, we had just created a completely different scene from the one on top. The third illustration tip I want to share with you is to try to find graphic elements and characters that are available in a number of poses in Canva. So for example, if you click on the raccoon, there's no other recommendations that are showing up. And so you know that there isn't another pose for this specific raccoon that we could use. But let's say we were to click on this bear, you see that there's a section that popped up called magic recommendations. If you click on see all, you will see that this one bear has a number of poses available. And then there's also other animals that have different poses. So these would be perfect for you to try to create different scenes 
because not only can you change the background and the different elements you put in their hands and on their heads like I showed you in the previous tips, you have a completely different bear pose to use for a different scene. So that just allows you to create a lot more variety. And I would highly recommend trying to find characters that have this variety in poses. Tip number four, be patient. It could take some time before you're able to find the characters and scenes that match the story you have in mind. And tip number five, be flexible. You may have to adjust your story to align with what graphic elements you're able to find on Canva. And the creation of your storybook illustrations could take days or even weeks depending on how detailed and complex your illustrations are and how much time you're able to devote to it on a daily basis. But the key part is make sure you enjoy the process. Step three, create your children's storybook cover. I recommend creating your book cover only after you've completely finished your interior pages for the following reasons. Number one, once you have your whole story written and illustrated, it is a lot easier to create a book cover that is representative of the key messages in your story. Number two, you need to know the exact number of pages in your book in order to accurately generate your book cover template from the Amazon KDP cover generator. Again, if you're not familiar with how to generate a book cover template from Amazon KDP to ensure your cover size and margins are accurate, please make sure you watch my previous video tutorial on low content journal publishing. The only difference you would want to keep in mind is that given we're creating a storybook instead of a low content journal, we would want to select the interior type as premium color instead of black and white. Step four, upload and publish your children's storybook on Amazon KDP. Once you have both the interior pages and your cover completed and saved in a PDF print format, your children's storybook is now ready to be uploaded and published on Amazon KDP. The steps you would take to upload your children's storybook is almost exactly the same as how you would upload your low content journals with the exception of the following few things. Exception number one, given a children's storybook is definitely not a low content book, you will no longer check off the checkbox that says low content book under the category section of your book upload screen. Exception number two, because your book is no longer marked as a low content book, Amazon requires that your book be associated with an ISBN number. You can either provide your own if you already have one, or you can have Amazon generate one for you for free. Exception number three, under the print option section of the book upload screen, you will need to make sure you select the correct ink and paper type, which in this case would be premium color interior with white paper, as opposed to black and white interior with white paper, which we would have selected for a low content journal. And there you have it. I hope this video inspired you to create your own children's storybook. And if you enjoyed this video, please remember to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more related content. See you next time.